Okay, so how is everyone today? Good. Okay, so last time we were talking about, uh, we, f we, we had finished talking about um, the shape of polynomials and, and the local and global uh, properties of polynomials. So any questions about that? Okay, so today we're talking about uh, division. Uh, so for example, uh, I could say, well, in the first place, this is section 5.4, division, division uh, of polynomials. So here's a grade school problem. Uh, divide uh, 178 by 7. So the way this goes, just to remind you, is that you put 178 in the house and then 7 is outside and <laughs> 7 wants to come in. So you first ask about the leftmost digit and then ask how many times can 7 go into 1? No times, it can't go in. So then you take another digit and then you ask how many times can 7 go into 17? The answer is twice. So you write a 2 above the 17, and then this 2 realizes it's doing a long division problem and jumps off the house in desperation. But hits the 7 on the way down. 2 times 7 is 14. You write it under the 17 and then subtract. OK, so 17 minus 14 is 3. Notably, this number right here needs to be less than 7. If if you write, if the number you end up writing right here is less than seven, then you have made an error. Uh, thank you. If it, if, it, if it is not less than seven, so that is to say, if it is greater or equal to seven, then you have made an error. Okay, so now what do we do? Carry down the eight. Okay, so then we ask again, seven wants to come in. How many times can seven go into 38? five times, so we write the five here, five jumps off the house, hits the seven on the way down, that's 35, then you do subtraction, okay, and then what's left here? Three, and notice that this is the ones place, so there's no more digits to carry down, so we're able to make a conclusion about this. Uh, specifically, there's a, there's a name, uh, there's a math name for, for uh, that one and for that one. So what's the math name for this one? This is the quotient. And what's this one? Remainder. This is the remainder. And then the other two are harder to remember. What is this one? This is the divisor. Divisor. And what's this one? Divisor. <laughs> yeah, you might, you might, you know, that'd be a reasonable name. But as, as it happens, it's dividend. OK, so you have these four quantities the dividend, the divisor, the quotient, and the remainder, and they can all be combined into a single equation, this equation. So therefore, 178 is 7 multiplied by 25 plus 3. <coughs> and it's always possible to do this. It's always possible to write. Uh, it's always possible to write dividend is equal to divisor multiplied by quotient uh, quotient plus remainder. <coughs> Okay, so you can always do that. 
uh, then when you're learning when you're learning about this uh, that means that so when when the instructions are divide in by D when when that's the case you you can always find that n is equal to d q plus r and 0 is less or equal to r is less than d it's always possible to do this for a, for a positive d well there's this, there's a special case uh, when when r is equal to 0, in that specific case, uh, d is called a proper divisor. Proper divisor. And a synonym for that is factor of n. So that being the case, is 7 a proper divisor of 178? No, it isn't. Why not? Right, because, because the remainder is 3. Uh, how about is 7 a proper divisor of 35? Yes. yes, because the quotient is 5 and the remainder is 0. So it's a proper divisor. Good. So I hope you remember all these things from grade school. Any question about these things? So now we're going to do exactly this, uh, but we're going to do it with polynomials now. And because there's more pieces, uh, there's a lot of moving parts. Okay. So for example, uh, just for example, <coughs> divide. Divide uh, 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4x plus 5 by x plus 2. So I'd like for you to observe that even the instructions are just the same, right? Divide this thing by that thing. So this is the dividend, and that's the divisor. OK, so it still goes exactly the same. That is, you've got you've to uh, write the dividend inside the house. 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4x plus 5 and then you write the divisor outside. Okay, and still, <laughs> x plus 2 wants to come in. So just like, just like um, when you're doing it with integers, when you're dealing with the dividend, the thing inside of the house, you deal with, when you're dealing with integers, you deal with the leftmost digit. And when you're dealing with polynomials, you deal with the highest degree term, which if you've written them in, in the standard order, it'll be the leftmost term. So the leftmost term, the one of highest degree, is here. Okay, and then that's inside the house. And then outside the house, the term of highest degree is that one. So those are the highest degree terms. So now we'll take these two, both, pull them over to here for a computation. So specifically, we're going to divide that one by that one. So we're going to do 2x cubed divide by x. So what is 2x cubed divide by x? 2x squared. 2x squared. So that's part of the quotient. And the quotient is what gets written on top of the house. So now this goes up here. That 2x squared gets written up there. And then the 2x squared jumps off the house 
and hits the <coughs> divisor on the way down. So still working over here in this scratch area, we'll do 2x squared multiplied by x plus 2. Okay, what is 2x squared multiplied by x plus 2? Distributing that out. <laughs> it's Friday, huh? Hard to... <laughs> okay, 2x cubed plus 4x squared. Okay, now what are we going to do with this? Put it under this. So 2x cubed plus 4x squared. So I wrote it under there. And then after we did that, what was it that we did with it? We subtracted it. So because we're going to subtract this much, be sure to parenthesize it so that you remember you're subtracting all of it. Okay, so now notice, when we do this subtraction, how many cubes will be left over? None. That is the point. The highest degree term in this step was cube. So by the end of this step, there needs to be no more cubes. If there were cubes left over, then you have made an error. So the cubes subtract away, and then how many squares are left? Add one. Negative seven. Because we're subtracting. So negative seven x squared, but no cubes. So now what do we do? We've got to do one more thing before we can get to the, before the next step can begin. Yeah. Just like we were carrying down a digit, now we have to carry down the low order terms. These get carried down. Okay, so one step, one step of the division algorithm for polynomials is complete. So now, uh, inside of the house, what is the highest degree term? Right, so we'll take it, take it, and we'll take the highest degree term outside, and we'll take them over here to the side for a computation. Specifically, we're going to divide them. So we'll do negative 7x squared divided by x. What is that? Negative 7x. 7x. Okay, so then what do we do with this negative 7x? Put it on the top so it goes up, 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 onto the roof. Then the negative 7x jumps off the house, hits the x plus 2 on the way down. That's negative 7x squared minus 14x. What do we do with that? Very good. So it gets written up here. Negative 7x squared minus 14x. We're going to subtract that much, so parenthesize and then subtract. <coughs> so how many squares will be, where, will be left over after this? zero, which is the point. If there were any squares left over after this step, that would indicate that you've made an error. Okay, so how many x's are there? 18. 18. So 18 x's, and then what's the last thing before the next step can begin? Carry down the five. Okay, so now what's the highest degree term? The, yeah, the x's. So there's 18 of them. So I'll, I'll grab it and pull it over here to the side for a computation. So 
So 18. X over X, well that's 18. What do I do with that 18? Put it on the top. Okay, then the 18 jumps off the house, hits the divisor on the way down. 18 multiplied by x plus 2. That is 18x plus 36. And I write this 18x plus 36 underneath the current dividend, parenthesize it all, and subtract. Okay, so how many x's are left over? Zero, that's the point. So then uh, 5 minus 36 is negative 31. Okay, so now let's think about this for a moment. <clears throat> we have nothing left to carry down. But now I wanna, I wanna make sure that we understand. Th this is the place that you stop. So we're gonna have to stop doing the division here, but why is it that we stop here? Okay, so here's my question. What is the degree of the divisor? It's degree one. This is degree one. Uh, what's the degree of the dividend here? This is degree three, right? The fact that, uh, the fact that this one uh, that this one is more than, greater than, or equal to this one means that you must proceed. So then we proceeded to here. What's the degree of this one? Degree two. Which is greater than or equal to that degree. So you must continue. Then what was the degree here? One. Which is greater than or equal to that one. So we must continue. And then what's the degree of this constant when reckoned as a polynomial? Degree zero. So degree zero is less than this one. So then you must stop. You can't go any further. That's just like if I were to, if I were to say, uh, I want you to take these 23 M&Ms and make them into groups of size four. Well, you could take four, then you'd have 19, then you could take four, <clears throat> and you'd have 15, then you could take 4, you'd have 11, then you could take 4, you'd have 7, then you could take 4, you'd have 3, and now you can't take anymore because there's not enough to take. So the taking occurs with the degrees. There's not a, the degree is not high enough anymore for you to take something of degree 1 anymore. Okay, good. Any question about this? So my, so a comment I'd like to make is, isn't this complicated? <laughs> yeah, it's a little complicated, but I was drawing all the arrows to try to show you what goes where and all of that. It's kind of like a John Madden diagram, really. Okay, but now we're going to do one that's even more complicated. Yeah. Uh, just, just so you can see what, it, what it's like. Okay, so for example, uh, divide, divide, uh, say, 5x to 4 plus 3x uh, squared plus 2x plus 7 by x squared plus 1. So this one is more complicated for a couple of reasons. One of the reasons is that what was the degree of the divisor on the previous exercise? 1, the divisor. The, div the, the degree of the dividend was 3. So the, d the divisor being degree uh, 2 makes this more complicated. And furthermore, the degree of the dividend is also more complicated. Uh, is, is, is four, so it'll be more complicated like that. But before we get any further, I'd like for you to observe uh, something about this. 
and that is that notice in this drawing, uh, in this in this computation here, uh, I arranged it so that all the cubes line up, all the squares line up vertically, all the degree one terms line up vertically, and all the degree zero terms line up vertically. So do you observe, it's kind of like everything's in columns. Okay, I strongly encourage you to take that strategy, otherwise you are in serious danger of making errors, like trying to subtract squares from cubes or something like that. So that being the case, I've, I've, if, if I hadn't, give you that, hadn't given you that warning, then I would have set you up for failure in this problem, because why? What, what do you mean? Right. So there's, there's how many cubes are there? Well, there, there's, zero. <laughs> there's zero, right? There's zero cubes. So, so as a result, when you're doing the division algorithm, you need to explicitly write zero cubes. Otherwise, you're probably going to make an error. OK, specifically, uh, specifically, what goes in the house is 5x to 4 plus 0x to 3 plus 3x to 2 plus 2x plus 7. So notice I wrote 0x cubes. Okay. Furthermore, what else do I need to do to make sure I don't have an alignment error? This one has zero x's, right? So this one should be x squared plus zero x plus one. <coughs> Any question about this? <clears throat> OK. So as a result, <clears throat> uh, as a result of this, now the procedure is exactly the same. You select the highest degree term inside and the highest degree term outside. You take them over to the side for a computation. 5x to 4 divided by x squared is how much? 5x squared. What do we do with this 5x squared? Put it on the top because it belongs with the quotient. Okay, then it jumps off the house, hits the divisor on the way down. <clears throat> so 5x squared <coughs> multiplied by x squared plus 0x plus 1 is uh, 5x to 4 plus 0x to 3 plus 5x to 2. Now, what happens is, this is the, this is the error that I see students do. If I, if I were not writing the, uh, the zeros, then students will sometimes write the square term under the cube term or something like that, and then they start subtracting, and it's, it's misaligned. OK, so this. Let's put right here. So subtract 5x to 4 plus 0x to 3 plus 5x to 2. So we're going to subtract that much. So how many degree 4 terms will there be when we're done? None, None which is the point. Uh, just a as a matter of just niceness and just happenstance, how many, how many cubes are there? None. Also none. That's just, that's just a bonus. That's just nice. Uh, so there's no degree 4, no degree 3. How, how much degree 2? Negative. negative 2. So negative 2x squared. And then what must we do to complete this step? Yeah, Carry down the lower order terms. <laughs> OK. So now, are we supposed to continue? Why are we supposed to continue? 
Right, the degree of the divisor, this, the degree of the divisor is degree two. And then to begin with, we had something that was degree four. <coughs> four is greater or equal to two, so we, so we proceed. What is this? this? This one is degree two. So degree two is greater or equal to degree two, so we proceed. Okay, so you take the highest degree term there, highest degree term here, take them over to the side for a computation. Uh, so it would be negative 2x squared divided by x squared is what? Negative 2, uh, so negative 2. What do we do with that negative 2? So it goes, well, it doesn't matter. So minus 2. So I wrote it over there just because it's like we, ha we could skip that one. OK, then negative 2 jumps off the house, hits the, this thing, x squared plus 0x plus 1 on the way down. So that's negative 2x squared plus 0x minus 2. This gets written under the current dividend. And we're going to subtract it. OK, so how much square is there? None. None. OK, good. That's how we know that we did this part right. Then 2x minus 0x is 2x. And then 7 uh, uh, minus negative 2 is 9. So what's the degree of this? 1. Degree 1. So, so what? Stop. This is where we stop. We can't go any further. Because, because now the degree of the divisor is more than the degree of the dividend. Okay. So as a result, <coughs> I could now ask you, I could, I could say, OK, please tell me the quotient of this division. Very good. 5x squared minus 2. And what's the remainder? 2x plus, nine. 2x plus 9. And then, as a result of this, you can now take all four of these items, the dividend, the divisor, the quotient, and the remainder, and you can combine them all into a single equation. So I would like for you to do that now. The dividend, the divisor, the quotient, and the remainder. Okay, so the result of this is that 5x to 4 plus 3x to 2 plus 2x plus 7 is x squared plus 1 multiplied by 5x squared minus 2 and then plus 2x plus 9. Okay, so is x squared plus 1 a proper divisor of, of this thing? No. no, it's not. It's, and how can you tell that x squared plus 1 is not a proper divisor? Because the remainder is not 0. Okay, good. So, isn't this really tedious and boring? Yes. Yeah. We should never do it again? <laughs> OK, so, so now here's the thing. Uh, I can make it to where, for this kind, and I haven't told you why,
for the first kind that we did, I can give you a different way to do it that is, that is, that only takes like that much space and only takes like 30 seconds. This one is never going to get any better. And I, I promise you, if I could make it better, I would. <laughs> because then I wouldn't have to, you know, grade it. Uh, but it's, th this particular one cannot be made any better. Okay, but this kind can be made so much better that it's worth having an aside to show how much better we can make it. Now, to, to, to do this aside, uh, I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to ask you a question that kind of seem, seems non sequitur. Like, I don't, I don't understand why we're asking this question. Okay, so I just need you to hang with me for a minute. So here's a polynomial. f of x is 2x cubed uh, minus 3x squared plus 4x plus 5. I want you to evaluate f at negative 2. So by that I mean I want you to, to, plug, to plug it in. Okay, so f evaluated at negative 2. Let's do it. So that'd be 2 multiplied by negative 2 cubed, and then minus 3 multiplied by negative 2 squared, plus 4 multiplied by negative 2, plus 5. Okay. Well, that'd be negative 8 multiplied by 2 is negative 16. That'd be 4 multiplied by 3 is 12, so minus 12. And then that'd be negative 8, and then plus 5. So now I'll make groups of 2. That would be negative 28. That would be negative 3. So that would be negative 31. Wasn't that fun? Yeah. It was not fun. So the, the, the correct answer is that that's not that great. Uh, now, imagine, imagine that uh, it was like your job to evaluate polynomials all day. You know, you, you're given like, you know, you're given like, okay, here's, here's uh, 100 polynomials, and we need each of these 100 polynomials evaluated at these 100 positions. W wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't that be just terrific? No, it would be not terrific. Uh, nevertheless, some, there was a time when, when uh, m more or less, to, that, that was necessary to do such a thing uh, before there were calculators. And uh, people would make these, these numerical tables of functions evaluated at, at just lots and lots and lots of points so that you could just open up the book and search for the one that you wanted and find it because that was faster than doing it by hand. So people literally compiled enormous books. Uh, well, necessity is the mother of invention. So, so... Some, some, some folks came around and said, okay, well, can we, can we make polynomial evaluation any faster? Okay, so here, here's what I want you to observe. Take that f. Uh, f of x is 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4x plus 5. Now, I'd like for you to observe there's four terms. And if we ignore the last one for a moment, do you observe that they all have an x, except the last one? Okay, so, so for, for all those terms, except the last one, I'm going to factor out an x. And the result would look like this. x multiplied by uh, 2x squared minus 3x plus 4 and then plus 5 because it, it had to be left, left alone over there. Okay. So now, inside of those parentheses, there are three terms. And I'd like for you to observe that, except for the last term, they all have an x. So I'm going to factor out that an x and leave that last term by itself. So 
x, x, and then 2x minus 3, and then plus 4, and then plus 5. Okay, so now in the square parentheses, let's ignore everything else. I'd like for you to observe that uh, all the terms in the square parentheses, except the last term, uh, have an x. So I'm going to factor out that x. x, 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 2. Then there's nothing else, right, <laughs> inside of there. Okay, then minus 3, and then plus 4, and then plus 5. Now, at, at this point you might think, well, that's, this is kind of a parlor trick. I'm not sure why we're doing this at all. Uh, but I'd like for you to observe that uh, if you wanted to evaluate the, uh, an expression like this, watch how it works. <clears throat> because we have parentheses inside of parentheses inside of parentheses, that means that you have to take the innermost thing first. So you take the 2. And then if we were going to evaluate it negative 2, we'd multiply by that and get negative 4. And then subtract 3 and get negative 7. And then multiply by negative 2 and get 14. Then add 4 to get 18. Then multiply by negative 2 to get negative 36. And then add 5 to get negative 31. And I just did it all in my head just then. Um, I like that part better. But here's the thing. <laughs> It, I mean, you might like it because, you might like this one better because there's writing. So I did this in my head, but now let me show you a way that you can do it like this uh, with a little bit of writing. So specifically, what I want you to observe is that to, to evaluate a polynomial in this way, you take this number and then you multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. So you're alternating a multiply and an add. So the only thing that really matters, because here we have x, 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 and if, it was, if the degree was higher, there'd just be more x's, x, 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 going that way. The only thing that matters is, is these numbers, 2, negative 3, 4, 5. So I'm going to make myself a little table so I can keep track of it all. So I'll write that here, 2, negative 3, 4, and five, and then to remind myself that I was do, that I was evaluating at negative two, I'll write that right there. So this is the this is the uh, the house, an upside down house. So what was the first thing that we did? We said we took the two. So the two is going to sneak outside. It's going to run away from home. And then after playing for too long, the two realizes it's hungry and comes back for a sandwich. Mm -hmm. But negative two is guarding the door. So to get back in. To get back in, it gets multiplied by negative 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Okay, so then take the 2, multiply by 2 to get back in. Now what do you do with these? Because we just did a multiply, that means it's time to add. So this would be negative 7. Okay, so then now what do you do with this negative 7? You multiply by negative 2 to get it back in, which would be 14. So we just did a multiply. Now what do we do? Add. So that would be 8. Uh, got to keep go with my color scheme here. 18. So we just did an add. Now what? Mul multiply by negative 2. And then add. So the answer to the question is negative 31. And we did it by alternating <laughs> multiplies and adds. So if I asked you to, to do a different question, a, a different evaluation, so say like this, f evaluated at, say, positive 2, let's do that real quick. So how would you do it? Okay, so let's see how quick it can go. So first you do 2, and then negative 3, and then 4, and then 5. And then now, because we're doing it at 2, I'll write the 2 here. So now, without rushing, without, you know, without really forcing myself, let's see just how fast can I do it. 
Okay, so the 2 comes down. <coughs> Multiply, get a 4. 1, 2, 6, 12, 17. The answer is 17. Okay. So any question about this? This is a, a fast way to evaluate a polynomial. This method to evaluate a polynomial, this, this table here, is called Horner's method. To evaluate a polynomial. Now, there's something else magical uh, about this. Uh, so the, the, the reason for this method's existence is that it made dividing polynomials, I'm oh, sorry, I said it out loud, it makes evaluating polynomials uh, quick. Do you have a question? Does that only work if the degrees are like, in order? Yeah, th they have to be in order. And if there were missing terms, you'd have to write them. So like if, if, for, it, if, there, were, if there were no x's, you'd have to write a zero right there. Because this is, again, a tabular method, and you have to have one column for each, for each one. But now, I hope that you've looked at this long enough and said, man, negative 31 has showed up a lot of times today, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, didn't it show up? Didn't it show up, like, on the first problem that we did? Yeah, you remember that? Do you remember when the quotient was 2x minus 7, uh, 2x squared minus 7x plus 18. Do you remember that? Do you remember that? <laughs> Do you remember that? 2, negative 7, 18, negative 31. Huh. Okay. okay. <laughs> now, so here's, here's the upshot of, of this. Historically speaking, you know, people came up with, you know, we need to evaluate polynomials quickly, so they came up with that way to, alter, to do the alternation of multiplies and adds, and it's called Horner's method, and then, and then people realized, oh, you can also, that also uh, has to do with division of, of uh, polynomials. So here's, here's what it is is that evaluating a polynomial p of x at x equal to c is equivalent. So what I mean is evaluating a polynomial at, at x equal to c with Horner's method is equivalent. to dividing p of x by x minus c. So notably, notably, x minus c is degree 1. and monic. So, so, what I want you to see from this is that um, this example, what was the divisor? It was this one, right? Was it monic? Yeah, it's monic. But is it degree one? It is not. So you couldn't possibly use this very neat thing for this problem. You couldn't do it, but you could do it for the first problem. So let's do, an, let's do one of those and see just how fast it can be. Okay. So for example, please divide, divide negative nine x to four plus 10x to 3, plus 7x to 2, minus 6, by x minus 1.
Okay, so can we use Horner's method to do this? Yes, yes because the, the two requirements for, for using Horner's method are what? That the divisor is <coughs> monic and degree one. By the way, I'm saying monic, but I haven't said what that means yet, <laughs> today anyway. What does monic mean? <laughs> What is it? The leading coefficient is 1. OK. So can we use Horner's method? Yeah. So what goes in the table on the, on the top row? Uh -huh, negative 9, 10, 7, 0, and then what? Yeah, it does that every once in a while. I don't know what that is. Uh, negative 6. So why the zero there? For the de for the degree one term, right? Okay, so then who's guarding the door? Which one? Somebody. Somebody. <laughs> so let's look at it. Evaluating a polynomial at C is the same as dividing by x minus C. So if it's x minus c, then it's c. So on, 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 uh, on this exercise, when we were dividing by x plus 2, we'd have to evaluate where? If, if we, when we were doing this, what would we have to evaluate at? Not 2. Negative 2. So when we're doing this, for this one, you've got to do it at 1. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the negation of it, yeah. OK, so then without rushing, uh, negative 9, negative 9, 1, 1, 8, 8, 8, 8, 2. OK, so then as a result, you can tell me the uh, quotient. So what's the quotient? Negative 9 how much? So it's, it can't be 4 because we're taking it down by 1. <coughs> so it would have to be cubed. Negative 9x cubed and then plus 1x squared plus 8x plus 8. And yes, of course, you wouldn't under normal circumstances write 1x squared, but since this is the first time I'm doing it, I want you to be sure to see the correspondence. And then what's the remainder? The remainder is 2, and that's the result of this. So now, the last thing that we need, are we running out of time? Yeah, probably. The last thing is that this, this right here in your textbook anyway, is called synthetic division. But I, I do, would like you to know that the, his, the historical part of it is that historically, the purpose of it is to evaluate a polynomial. And then it was, then it was oh, neat. It also, it also lets you divide. Good. So have a nice uh, have a nice weekend.